In this lesson, we're going to talk about models for multiplication. It's important for students to have an opportunity to act out or model their multiplication, and so they are able to develop a numerical sense of what the product will be um, when we talk about numbers. And our first model is repeated addition. And so Kemi has three boxes of eight crayons. How many crayons does she have? This is represented by the product of three times eight, or three groups of eight. And so this is eight plus eight plus eight. It's repeated addition. We're adding eight to itself three times. And so three groups of eight could be pictured with um, a discrete model, the sets where we join them together. And we can see that there's a total of 24 dots. And so 3 times 8 would equal 24, because that's the total number of crayons. For this model, the order of the factors is important. Because we are reading it left to right, we are talking about how many groups of a certain size. And so we do care about the order that we write the product. We will talk about a property of multiplication where we know that order doesn't matter. But for the model to draw a picture, we do care what order those numbers are written. And <clears throat> so here's a definition for the multiplication of two whole numbers. If we have two whole numbers a and n, and n is not equal to zero, then we would say a n times a is a plus a plus a so that the total number of terms is n. We're going to add up a n times. And if n actually equals 0, then we just say n times a equals 0, um, because I'm not adding it at all, so I have 0. Um, written in this order, n times a, n is called the multiplier. It's telling me how many groups I have. a is called the multiplicand. And the multiplicand tells us the size of each group. And n times a is called the product. So the product of the multiplier with the multiplicand. Our second model for multiplication is the area or array model. The area model is a continuous or a measurement model where we're measuring length. And so for area, on 3 times 4, I'd have a rectangle where the um, left side is 3 and the bottom side is 4. Then if you look at how many square units we have, we have a total of 12 square units. And so for area, we'd have a 3 by 5 rect... sorry a 3 by 4 rectangle, because we're looking at 3 times 4. For an array, this is a discrete model where our objects are distinct. And so, like chairs in a classroom, um, books on a shelf, those would be discrete models, and we would call it an array. And this is a 3 by 4 array. The, again, for this model, order matters. That first factor is telling us the number of rows. Rows are the things that go horizontally, so there's three rows. The second factor tells us the size of those rows, and there are four objects in each row. And so this is a three by four array. Same idea with the area on the rectangle. Horizontally, it's a distance of three, and then, um, sorry. When I look vertically, it's a distance of 3, and horizontally, it's 4. And our third model for multiplication is the Cartesian product, which we saw when we talked about sets. So parents are choosing a first and middle name for a baby boy. Their first name choices are Michael and Jeffrey. Their middle name choices are Thomas, Alexander, and Benjamin. And so we can draw that tree 
to look at the different combinations for a name. Um, when we go off for their first names, it's either Michael or Jeffrey. So this has two branches when we pick the name because there's just two first names. And then once you choose a first name, there are three branches coming off for the three middle names, Thomas, Alexander, and Benjamin. And so the total number of branches that come off of this tree are six. The first branch being Michael Thomas, Michael Alexander, Michael Benjamin, Jeffrey Thomas, Jeffrey Alexander, and Jeffrey Benjamin. Those are our six choices for a name. And so to write this in a definition for the multiplication of whole numbers, if we have sets A and B where the size of set A is little a and the size of set B is little b, then we would say little a times little b is the size of the Cartesian product a cross b. Okay? And remember that we don't multiply sets, we look at their Cartesian product. So the size of the Cartesian product a times b is little a times little b, the product of those two numbers.